two things that I'm passionate about. One is electronics and electronic kits, and the other is radio control. So I couldn't be happier today to be able to build this little remote transmitter and receiver module. It works on the 2.4 gigahertz, and it is incredibly inexpensive. Looking here on the website, you can see uh, the silly price and all of the parts that you get very well described there. And there is also a click for a manual to, to download. The manual is very detailed and takes you through each of the steps. This is a very good introduction because it includes some surface mount components in addition to the more standard through hole components. Let's start putting it together now and see how we get on. Inside the kit box then there are two bags. One is with the receiver components which we can put to one side for the moment and the other with the transmitter components. The first thing we need to solder onto the board is the little tiny transmitter chip itself. That, as I mentioned before, is a surface mount. So I'm going to be using my faithful Haku iron here, which I built from a kit. The beauty of, of this is that it has a whole range of different tips that you can get for it. So I've chosen one of the smallest ones. Let's see how we get on. Here we can see the little integrated circuit. If we turn it over, we can see the identification TXS CJ981G. Now that's not one of the common 2.4 gigs chips that I'm familiar with, but hey ho. Now, unlike on the silk screen, there's no little dimple in the IC, but it is indicated by this little circle, which is pin one. Let's apply some flux and line the component up. That's looking good. Now that we have the first pad soldered down, the others should be reasonably straightforward. Next we have to fit the only resistor. It's 1K, brown, black, red, one zero and two more zeros. Now back to my standard tip for the iron. And it says to keep the legs once you've cut them off because we're going to need them to put some jumpers on the board. So we'll just put those carefully over there. The two jumpers fit in these locations here. Bend it into a nice U shape there to keep things neat. Next we fix the crystal which goes in here. Just be a little careful, don't bend these legs because where the legs pass through there's a small glass seal for the crystal and that's quite delicate. The little capacitor marked 104 just slots in there. That's followed by fitting the two electrolytic capacitors. Pay attention, they are polarised. The longest leg is the positive and that's marked clearly on the circuit board here and they should be gently fold it over so that they sit flush with the board. Next we fit the little LED, the spacer to keep it off the board, 3mm spacer, and we put the spacer on the longest leg, which is the anode, put it simply in like that and then solder it. Next we can fit all the little switches. Next is the power switch. Next we install these little function switches, but we need to bend the tabs to be soldered through 90 degrees and that's how it should look when you're finished. I would recommend soldering the center two down first. Make sure you put a generous blob on the side there because that's got to support that function switch. Next we install the little jumper to select the frequency and that just sits in the little gap there in the circuit board. The final thing to do is to wire in the little battery box which is screwed to the PCB and assemble it with all the buttons into the box. That's quite straightforward. The switch in the up position now. We press the buttons, we can see that at least the light is coming on. We can move on now to assembling the receiver. Building the receiver board is pretty much the same process as for the transmitter, starting off with the little surface mount receiver chip and following on with the other components. I'll go ahead and build that now and uh, I'll note if there are any challenges or things that you should be aware of.
Nothing particularly challenging about the receiver board. Make sure that the ICs are installed with the correct notch at the end where the silk screen indicates it. The electrolytic capacitors, make sure of the polarity. The little transistor has the flat on this side. When you install the switch for the frequency, choose the same as for the transmitter. I've just put a jumper here on the connection between the A and the center point. There was no jumper included with the kit, but I have a gazillion of them. And if you're short, find an old PC motherboard and you'll probably find a few of them. Take care when installing these connections because they're polarized. And these ones on this side for the motors, the notch is on the outside, whereas the DC supply input, the notch is on the inside there. And you can see positive and negative indicated on the board being the red and black. Nothing really special to mention on the back here. Carefully inspect your work once you've finished to make sure that you've not missed any pins out and that all the solder joints are good. Just out of habit, I've clipped the ends off of the IC legs there, but it's probably not required. Time to test. As a quick test, I've hooked up a little motor with a fan on it, and that's connected to the first connection here. We've got power just from four AA cells providing around six volts. This will run from three to 12 volts. So we're on and ready to go. Not those, not those. Ah, so this is the auxiliary function, if you like. So this button rotates one way and the other button the other. Let's move the connection across. Uh, this must be either this one or this one. And finally, it must be these buttons. All is good. So we've built ourselves a little remote control with the possibility to drive three motors. I wonder what we can do with it now. Well, what have we here? I've had this little tank mechanism for some time waiting for a suitable project, and I don't think we can find a more suitable project than this one. Gone for broke and put in a three cell LiPo, so that's nominally 12 volts, which is the maximum. I've wired the motors up. We have forward and reverse on that track. And similarly there, so that should get us forward and backwards. Well, whichever it is, forwards or backwards, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's go and play. It turns out that my tank driving skills leave something to be desired. Uh, desired with a new camera by the looks of it. My thanks go to Juanita at IC Station for supplying the transmitter and receiver kit, which I'm having an awful lot of fun with.